Uh, now we're going to take a look at another way to access databases with C++ Builder XE3. In the first data set video, I use client data set. This time I'm going to talk to an Interbase database using Interbase Express components. So I'll say File New, FireMonkey Desktop Application, C++ Builder. We'll put down a TIB database. And the IB database component allows us to connect directly to an Interbase database under Users, Public, Public Documents, Brad Studio, NO, Samples, Data, and we've got our uh, an employee GDB, which has information about sales, orders, customers, employees. So that makes the database connection. In this case, I'm accessing it through local Interbase. I could also specify the server name here if I want to talk to an Interbase database that's running on another server. I can access it, get connected, It'll ask me for the username and password. I'll put those in. And now at design time, I'm connected to the database. So that I don't have to log in each time. I'll turn off login prompt, and I'll set the parameters. My default password for local interface is master key. You can change that uh, later on. And now again, when I connect, I connect to the database. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a TIB query component. And the TIB query component is going to let me do a SQL query against the database. And I'm going to put a transaction component. The transaction component allows me to start and, and commit or uh, roll back a transaction. I'll connect it to the uh, default database. The default action is going to be to do a commit uh, any time I tell it to, uh, to commit any retained uh, transactions that, are, that might be hanging there. So we've got that connected. We'll connect up the default transaction to the IB database. And then for the query, we'll connect it to the same TIB database component. And then we've got a couple more properties to set in uh, Interbase Express. One is the SQL statement. And uh, this unidirectional property, uh, if all we're going to do is read through the Interbase database and do things like display the data, not change it in any way, then I can turn unidirectional to true. And that way, Interbase doesn't have to remember any of the data that it's moving through because I'm never going to move back other than maybe in a visual grid uh, in the user interface. So that's good for reporting operations. You're reading through the data, doing calculations and other things. Uh, if you want to edit on the form, you'll want to turn off unidirectional. Then it, Interbase components will cache the data in case you need to go back and make some changes in your user interface in your application. In this case, I'm just going to read through and display the data. So we'll bring up the SQL uh, property inspector, and it shows me all the tables that are in my database. So I'm going to use the customer table, but again, this Interbase employee database has got sales and projects and employees, uh, jobs, countries, and so on. Let's take the customer table we can choose any fields that w columns that we want uh, I'm just going to take all of the columns from the database so we'll select star from customer and then now I've got uh, that SQL statement in the database and I can make activate the query and now I can go and say let's do a live binding wizard I want to link a grid and display a grid of data so let's put a string grid and the source, either a new source using the live binding wizard. Uh, in this case, I've got an existing source, which is my query. And I want to add a data source navigator to it. And then uh, it generates all of that for us. So we'll put the navigator at the top. Let's go down and turn off the editing uh, controls because we just want to use this as a, a browsing kind of application. We've got first, prior, next, and last, and I'm going to keep on refresh button, which says if somebody changes the database in some other application, periodically I might want to do a refresh. Here's the bind source DB and the binding list, which are part of the live binding engine. Let's put the navigator at the top of our user interface, and we'll take this uh, string grid, and we'll align it to the rest of the client area. And now we've got our data. And we can take this data and, uh, and run through it and take a look at it. Let's bring up the Live Binding Designer as well. So we can see the, the mappings. There's the Navigator. And here's the String Grid. We might want to also uh, 
put some other fields so we can see, like, for example, the first and last name uh, in, in a field or something else that, that we want to take care of. So we can add other fields, adding through the wizard or dragging and dropping components from your user interface. And now we take this application and run it. And we've got the data and we can go through it. If we want to add changes, then we have to add a little more logic to be able to do SQL update statements or use a client data set and a provider resolver technology. Uh, more about that later in a future video. But that's how easy it is to create a simple application to display data in a database. You can also right mouse click and bring up the columns editor and add all the columns or fields and you can manipulate the different properties of each of the columns. For example, their width, uh, all of them will default to the same width, but if you want to change and make, for example, the customer uh, name be a little wider, uh, make that uh, 150. And then when you're done, uh, run the application and the customer column will be a little larger. So lots of options for formatting, displaying uh, the data. Again, go back to the columns editor and pick the different columns. You can put custom formats, give it a different header. So here in uh, contact uh, first name, we might instead want that, con that just to be first name. And then for the last name, uh, let's just call that last name uh, in the header. And then when we run the application again, they'll have a little more friendly uh, headings. And you can play with colors and all the other things. Since it's a FireMonkey application, we could also go in and, and, uh, and, and change the style and load a different style. So for example, if we want to go and pick up one of the standard styles, we can go down here to Public Documents, Rad Studio, Tenno, Styles. And for example, let's pick the, uh, the transparent style and say apply and close. And now we run this application, it'll have a nice uh, transparent style that we can use. And we can scroll around and so on and resize. So all of that's available for us uh, using FireMonkey, uh, database access, in this case, uh, Interbase, uh, using the Interbase Express components and the Live Bindings engine and the String Grid. So that's a quick look at accessing an, a SQL database, in this case, Interbase database. And in future videos, we'll access other types of databases using DB Express instead of Interbase Express and see what more we can do with databases in C++ Builder XE3.